folks. Welcome to another Triple T Thursday. For those just joining us, that's Tools, Tips, and Talk, where we'll discuss info for the knife maker. In today's episode, we're going to continue our series on grinding tips. And today we're going to do how to grind a false edge and a distal taper. So let's go down to the table, see how we're going to get this done. So let's talk about false edges and distal tapers. So we're going to be doing these in a certain order and the reason I'm going to tell you to do these in a certain order is because it's going to help you do the next step easier. I'm starting with this um, basket weave Damascus uh, Bowie which I've already got a constant thickness it's a, uh, almost about a 3 16th um, all the way down the blade and I know it's perfectly level and flat because I did it on the surface grinder. So. Um, let's talk about false edges. We're going to do those first and I'll explain why when we get to the grinder. So what is a false edge? That's going to be where we take this part here and I wouldn't say to sharp but certainly to a point. There's a couple different um, types of false edges. This one you can see is curved and you're going to do this one differently than you would one that's straight which I tend to call a harpoon edge. And when we get to the grinder, I'll explain, um, you know, the different tooling you're going to need to do those. But we're going to do those first. Let's go take a look. So for this process, we're going to be using uh, a 10 inch wheel. Uh, you could you could get away with using a six inch wheel. I wouldn't, maybe a four inch, but I, I tend to use a, a bigger wheel for this. Uh, a 10 inch is about perfect. The reason I'm using the curved wheel is that this is curved. If we go and try to do this with a flat platened, you're just going to get flat parts all along and it's just not going to work. If this was a straight harpoon edge, I would use the flat platen and I would just put the whole thing up at once and you get one nice bevel on either side. Because it's curved, of course, I want the curve here. You'll notice I have my grinder in the horizontal position. If you don't have a grinder that will go horizontal, make a rest that you can sit this way in your grinder and just do it the same way. You are going to need either a rest that tilts or you're going to need some kind of jig where you can angle it and slide the blade in at an angle. The very first thing we're going to do is put our scribe line. So I'm going to go put some layout fluid and I'm going to mark a center line. Okay, so I've got my rest all set up. Um, the angle itself isn't important. You want it at about a, you know, 60-ish degree angle. It depends. The more angle, the longer your, um, the bevel will be on your false edge. So just do it once, and if it's not enough, then just drop the angle down a bit. So the reason we want this, like, don't do your bevels first so that this is even on both sides. You've got all of this plane to slide against the rest on both sides. Okay. If you bevel it, that means this thing is at a bevel and it's going to mess you up. What we're going to do is put this bevel all the way down the same depth. We're just going to work to our center line. We've got our angle fixed. We're just going to go down until we meet our line, flip it over, do it again. Then later when we do our bevels, then we're going to make that line meet at the tip. Because you always want this false edge to disappear as it gets close to the tip of the knife. Because this bevel should come up and they should converge right at the tip. If they don't, that just looks off. Okay, so let's get going. Again, if this was a, a harpoon edge, this would just be a flat platen, and I would just take the whole thing and move it right up against the platen. Okay, let's give it a shot. I'm always moving the knife from right to left because the belt is spinning in counterclockwise rotation here and it's just easier that way. You probably don't notice it with the camera angle, but I'm keeping the knife so that the area I'm grinding is perpendicular to the grinding belt. Uh, so I'm kind of moving it to match that swoop. Like all grinding, I find the offhand direction a little more challenging, but with time you'll get it right. 
Now I'm just making sure that plunge line or where that shark fin is matches on both sides. Okay, so let's take a look at our false edge. It looks really good. It's nice and even. Things to look out for, make sure that these two little edges here match. And then of course, you want to make sure you, you meet at the edge and there's no places where it's a little wider. So um, you can see it's really easy with the right tooling. Um, trying to do this freehand uh, is just hard. <laughs> so I don't advise it. Use a jig, use a, um, a rest and uh, get it done. Okay. Oh, and one last thing. Um, you'll notice I'm doing this before I do the bevels. And for my kind of grinding, you're going to be doing this. And this will kind of rub off this little, you'll wear off this little tip and it won't be as sharp. That's fine. Go back on your uh, plantain and just push this that way about a sixteenth of an inch and it will take that flat spot off. So don't worry about that. If you got a really small knife, then maybe put this a further this way than you want because you'll just push it that way. Okay. So now let's talk about distal tapers. Um, so a distal taper is when your blade gets thinner to the point than it is back here. A lot of times I will not do a distal taper other than by doing the bevels. Because if I'm going to do a full flat grind, I will probably just keep grinding this part over here until I see the false edge just gradually. It's going to be at its widest point here. And as I do the bevels, I'm just going to keep grinding each side until they slowly taper. Um, that's kind of the easiest way, especially on smaller knives. On thicker knives, this one's pretty thick, you can actually put in the distal taper before you do bevels. The easiest way to do that is on the surface grinder. If you don't have a surface grinder, I strongly recommend go watch the video up in the corner um, and uh, on how to build a surface grinding attachment. It's all there. The build is like $400. Uh, I use the surface grinder on every build, so go watch that video and build one. If you don't have a mill, I sell mag chucks on my website uh, if you need one. Otherwise, make one yourself, um, but get yourself a surface grinder. It'll make your life easier. So let's see how do we do this on a surface grinder. So here's the mag chuck and now I'm going to explain how we're going to get a distal taper. So I'm going to flip this over on the side here and you'll see that one of these has a channel in it. And most of these surface grinding attachments that you buy should have a distal taper attachment on them. So all I need to do is I'm going to remove this bolt loosen this one and then I'll be able to raise this chuck just a little bit at one end. Okay, so that'll make it higher. So then we'll make sure we put our blade at the exact same point as we flip it over and that should give us our distal taper. I love you. I love you too. So I've got that uh, middle bolt removed and the end bolt moved so that uh, you should see the taper. So watch here and you'll see the space difference. Okay, it's pretty close here and as I get down it gets wider. Okay, so all we're going to do is kind of mark where do we want our distal taper to end. So I want this to taper. I don't want the Ricasso to taper. So what I do is I'll put the blade exactly where I want that taper to end and then I'll kind of wheel myself in just a little bit so that it's not touching here and then I'll take off all of that. Move this down a bit. And then just remember if you have to put a little mark here and then down here so that you get the same on both sides. All right, let's grind it. When I set the depth of the grinder here, it was just a little too aggressive, so I actually had to back it off and then work into that. So 
So I've got my distal taper on one side. Okay, I, I chose not to go all the way down. I'll, I'll do the rest just when I do the bevels. You can already see that the uh, false edge already goes down almost to a point, and I'll finish it with the bevel. Now, I can't just flip this over like this and then do this side because now this width is the same as this width right here. So it just won't do anything. So now I have to basically measure how much I've gone up here and double it. And then I can do the other side. Okay, I've got this adjusted twice as much now. Now we can go and grind the other side. So because it's flipped over, you can't quite see it as much. So what you're going to do is just measure from where, uh, so it's about here. So I'm pretty happy with that. You can see if I hold it this way, it's got a really, really nice distal taper. Um, you can see that it pretty much meets at the tip on both sides. This one probably needs a little bit of grinding, but again, I'll clean it up on the platinum. Uh, it's pretty even, actually. So that's the distal taper on the blade. If you had, obviously this is a hidden tang knife, but if you had a full tang knife and you wanted to taper the tang, and a lot of people do this um, just to reduce weight in the tang, one thing you want to do, drill your holes first. Because what will happen is when you do a distal taper, okay, what some people have done is they'll put the two scales on here after they've done the distal taper to do the holes, and your holes are actually on a slight canter because of the taper. So do your holes first, okay, and then do your distal taper, then put your, your, um, your scales on here, and then drill the holes through so that you don't... Um, so your holes are straight, and you don't have any issues with um, um, with the scale. So drill your holes first so they're perfectly perpendicular to the blade. Then put your scale on, drill the hole, flip it over, put your other scale on, drill the other holes. All right, folks. I hope this video helped you guys on how to do false edges, distal tapers. I'm going to go... Do the bevel on this thing, and we'll see you in the next episode. Thanks, folks.